everyone. Happy Thursday. Um, okay, I'm not on time. <laughs> I have decided that if it's 7.05, I'm still on time. It's not, it's 7.09, so I'm late. How are all of you? We are going to hop right into it. Um, as you know, my heat was broken last week because I have a slumlord and live in New York City. Um, it's working now, so that's good. So thank you all for your suggestions and kind messages about that. But I'm still coughing. So if I start coughing, that's why. All right, cool. So let's get into it. So here is our agenda. We are going to be talking about, I'll just make myself small so y'all can see it. We are going to be talking about the Tasha K and Cardi B lawsuit. So we are going to go through the timeline, the current trial shenanigans, <coughs> See the coughing, um, the claims, the initial complaint, and then what I think is very important with this, the incentive structure behind social media drama, to be very honest, because people are not getting to really what the root of the issue is and why um, certain people do that. So before we get into that, oh, I removed myself. There I am. Before we get into that, a few of you have been asking for a breakdown of this lawsuit for a while. For context, this lawsuit has been going on since 2019, and I avoided it for one reason and one reason alone. And I'm going to tell you why. When I first started YouTube, y'all know I'm a strong 65 in my spirit. <laughs> I don't have Twitter. I don't have these things. You know, got on YouTube doing student loan stuff. And then I did my Kanye West video where I broke down um, Kanye West's contract after he tweeted all of it out. In a comment in that contract, someone commented something along the lines of Tasha's not going to like this. You can't be drinking wine. And I was like, who's Tasha? I don't know what this is. Like, I'm not on the YouTube. Like, what? So I was like, oh, maybe this is like a young person joke that I just don't get. Fast forward a few videos later when I pivoted and was like, okay, I'm going to do lawyer reactions to certain videos. Every once in a while, I get comments about, oh, you're copying Tasha K by drinking wine. Which I was like, what? So, it was, so when somebody finally said who the name, I was like, oh, let me go look. I don't ever want to be copying somebody. Like, that's super rude. I go and look, and I'm like, oh, this is two different things. She runs a drama channel called Unwind with Tasha K. This is a lawyer reacts. And y'all know I am a recovering lawyer these days. Amen. I have been delivered. Um, that usually talks about lawsuits and student loans and how much money I owe and paying off is very much different. Okay. However, I have realized, having been on the YouTube now a year and a half, when people have subscribers who like to comment negative things and kind of are a little bit aggressive, then there's usually a problem there. So that's why I didn't want to talk about the lawsuit. I was like, oh, that's commotion. I don't like commotion. However, this has grown out of hand and y'all have asked for it anyway. So we're going to talk about it. And no, people cannot trademark the word wine unbeknownst to some of um, her subscribers. And no, she never said that. However, her subscribers did, which I thought was like super weird. So as a lawyer, let's get into it. All right. So we are going to talk about this case. And if you're not familiar, this um, we're going to go what's going because it's currently in trial. I never thought it would get to trial, which is interesting. We are going to go from most recent to the actual complaint so that we're going to do the first part last. So the nature of the case, this case is basically about claims. Cardi B is suing Tasha K. Um, Tasha K is a YouTuber. We'll get into her background in a minute um, for slander per se, slander, libel per se, defamation, invasion of privacy, false light. Um, and basically these all fall under a series of 40 videos that Tasha made on her YouTube about Cardi B. Okay. So there's the background there and let's get into it. And I'm so, I'm gonna cough, hold on. <coughs> I don't have the Rona. I've gotten tested multiple times now and I'm like, oh, it's just because I have a slumlord. Okay, so here is our timeline. April 13, 2008, Tasha K, I just abbreviated it so it's a little bit easier posted um, the first video about Cardi B. September 19th, 2018, Cardi B sends cease and desist to Tasha K saying like, hey, Miss Ma'am, I don't like this and you take this down. Tasha K then goes on social media with the cease and desist letter and is like, mm, nope, leaves the video up. Never do that. This is very much reminding me of Without a Crystal Ball and Tati Westbrook craze that we did. Hey, Jace. And then we're going to go to March 21st, 2019, after um, Tasha K didn't remove the videos because now it grew into multiple videos. Cardi B files a lawsuit against Tasha K and Star Marie. So Star Marie was the original other defendant. She never responded to the case. So it then gets resolved in a second. So 
July 7th, 2019, Tasha K files an amended counter lawsuit against Cardi B saying, oh, now you are saying um, defamatory things about me in regards to the lawsuit. April 21st, oh, now I'm in the way. Hold on, I can't see. April 21st, Cardi B wins default judgment against Star Marie. So Star Marie never um, responded to the complaint. So the judge entered a default judgment for Cardi B. And then Tasha K's counterclaims were actually dismissed, which I realize is not in the timeline. And then January 10th, 2020, the trial started. Okay, 2022, sorry. I don't know, sometimes I know what you were in, who knows. Now, I would like to get into this foolishness, which is the petty judge. I love a good petty judge. So I want to read some quotes from this judge um, in the trial that's currently going on. And then we're going to get into the meat of the lawsuit. So the defendant, so Tasha Kay and her attorney, we're going to talk about her attorney and um, the very interesting legal work that her attorney is trying to do. It's not good. It's, it's, it's very a mess. It's very much a mess. Um, so she was trying to prove that out of the 40 videos that Tasha K made about Cardi B, they're not all negative, which is interesting. They're basically all negative. So I don't, I don't know why she would even say this. So the judge then said, the defendant can testify that she said positive things about the plaintiff. Judge Ray said, based on the evidence I've seen so far, it would be a stretch to argue that the defendant generally likes the plaintiff. If so, you need to question who your friends are. <laughs> This judge is very petty. So moving on to his second little comment that I thought was very funny. So Tasha, um, his last name is Kebby. I hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, and so this is a comment from her and then the judge, what, um, his response to this. So this comment is originally in one of the 40 videos that she posted. Cardi is someone who doesn't effing deserve fame, Kebby said. Judge Ray cracked a smile when he asked, is my lova? which is the attorney, so Tasha Kay's attorney, if she thought that the video was good for Kebby and the lawyer replied, yes. So now the judge is like, mm, that's interesting. Your client believes the plaintiff is bad because she engages with fans in a negative way. That your That's your defense for defamation. Judge Dre asked the attorney. This video actually supports malice. So she basically, he basically is telling the, um, the defense counsel, you are not doing a good job. You are actively disproving your case, um, which gets us to the burden of proof. So we've covered defamation on this channel numerous times. So I won't lecture you on what defamation is. Defamation is where you generally say false things about someone and an absolute defense to defamation is generally the truth. However, there is a different burden of proof if this is about a public figure. If there's a public public figure that you allegedly said defamatory statements about, the public figure has to prove that there's actual malice. So there's an actual malice standard, which I won't get into the whole thing right here, but the standard has been there since 1964, which you have to show that the person did this not only because they know it's not true, but because they hate you, because they are trying to ruin your career. They're trying to ruin you. They're doing it on purpose. Also, it's dry January over on my end, so please drink a glass of wine for me. Okay, so which goes back to the judge's point of, well, you're proving the malice for Cardi B's attorney and you are Tasha K's attorney, so what are you doing? It's, it's been interesting going through everything. All right, and I wanted to address this for one quick second, so trigger warning to this. Um, Cardi B, when she testified, <coughs> Sorry. Cardi B, when she testified um, during the libel trial, she said that she felt, um, I can't say that we're on YouTube, but y'all can read what the word is, after YouTubers' allegations. I think it's very important to note, a lot of people don't know how it feels when somebody all of a sudden says negative things about you to numerous people. And not like, oh, I told my group of friends this and they're mean to you in the schoolyard. The internet has changed all of that. Now, if someone says something that's false about you, the internet, all of a sudden, there's millions of people saying wild things to you. And a lot of people, I think, that are either not on the internet often don't realize that, which is also why I don't get on the Twitter, because the Twitter looks like the devil's playground. And Twitter is where you see this a lot. People have a mob mentality. Somebody will say one negative thing about something. Or a bunch of people would decide they want to be negative together and they will bum rush an entire person, hundreds of people, and that is not a normal experience to go through in life. So 
definitely understandable, understandable why um, Cardi B felt that way. Let me know if y'all can hear me. I think it cut off. So strange. Okay. Are y'all there? Okay. Oh, it, it looks like it's working now. I thought my internet cut off for a second. So Twitter is a wild place. So, um, and to Jace's point, ma'am, Lucifer is scared to get on Twitter. Exactly. So I think people should really think of it this way. Cause I've been I'm like doing the research for this. I've seen comments both ways of people like being empathetic, but also I have noticed that people that realize like, Hey, it's wrong to say, I'm going to get into what Tasha K said about her. Um, it's wrong to say those things about someone, but I don't like Cardi B. That's what people are saying. Just because you don't like the victim doesn't mean that it's right for somebody to make 40 videos. Also, do you know how much time it goes into making 40 videos about somebody? It's it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot of work to make one video. Okay, so let's keep going. Now, um, part of Tasha K's defense and the strategy of her lawyer, which I think the strategy is foolish, is to basically show that Cardi B is a type of person that is negative, that um, she is the type of person who, you know, if you don't know her, then you could believe that these things were true, these allegations, which um, preview of what the allegations are. Tasha K said on a video that I believe is still up when I checked it last week when I was doing the research, um, that Cardi B had herpes, that she was on drugs when she was pregnant with her child, these are also awful things to say objectively. Um, that she was, can I say this word? That she was a, I think you could say that she was a sex worker. Um, but the negative derogatory term for sex worker um, and other defamatory things. And then she kept repeating them and that she was violent and that she was a gangbanger and all these things. And that she cheated on her husband. So she made all these allegations that. We're going to get into whether or not she knew they were true or whether or not she knew that they were false. Spoiler alert. She definitely, it, it seems to be. And so those are the allegations. So the her defense counsel, their tactic is to show that in their opinion, anybody would believe that Cardi B was those things because what she posts on social media is a negative person. So it's easy to believe because remember the burden right now is malice. You have to show that. Yeah. I hate them. I want to ruin them. And that's why I did it. Not, oh yeah, a reasonable person would look online and be like, mm, I could believe that this person um, is doing drugs and is doing all these things. So this is um, from Law 360. This is part of the defense. So Kebby and her team want to paint a full picture of who Cardi B is by showing some of the rapper's social media posts and online videos. At issue were online videos and posts suggesting that Cardi B, whose real name is Belkalis Almanzar, is racist towards Black people. Also, that would be internalized racism if that was the case, which, child, I know the legal writer on this definitely wouldn't know what that means, and neither does the attorney. Um, had called a deceased baby a monkey, this is disgusting, and was involved in a bar fight in New York for which criminal charges are pending. A video about a social media post by stepfather of Cardi B's husband in which he suggests Cardi B uses drugs and thrives on public attention was also objected to by the rapper's attorney. So they're trying to use basically, thank you, Maxilla, they're trying to use um, basically the worst things that Cardi B has done on social media to say like, yeah, this is a bad person who says awful things and is doing nothing but awful stuff anyway. So of course I believe that she was also maybe doing these other awful things. And that is unfortunate. There's our legal system. One of my big issues with it, besides the fact that it's built to um, prosecute um, black and brown people all day for no reason, is our legal system allows victim blaming. It is allowed to basically defame and slander an entire victim in court, and you can basically ruin their character in court, which has nothing to do with the actual case, which is just very much sad to me. Um, and then also, just because people said something one time and they've apologized for it doesn't mean that they continue to do those behaviors. So. I just put this in there because this trial is giving nothing but chaotic energy. One juror was allegedly dismissed because they said they couldn't be impartial because they hate rap music, which is interesting. Um, another juror today, I believe it's today or yesterday, um, had symptoms of Rona. So they were also dismissed. And this trial is just nothing but hot mess express. So let's get into the complaint. So how the hell did all this start in 2019? Okay, 
Now, I would like to point out, I'm about to read this pettiness and I appreciate a petty lawyer. However, these are not my opinions and <clears throat> these are not my opinions and me and my small channel that has nothing to say about it. However, the petty lawyer in drafting their complaint, you know, decided to spice all of it up. Upon information and belief, while Kebby calls herself a celebrity gossip site, the real purpose of Unwind with Tasha K is to provide a platform for Kebby to publish and spread malicious rumors, slanderous assertions, and false information about celebrities, including plaintiff for her personal financial gain. Hmm. Upon information and belief, Kebby does this to draw various celebrities, social media followers to her site, including plaintiffs, social media followers, so she can increase what she charges for advertising to third parties that advertise with her. Now, that would be a very good strategy, a very problematic strategy. And yes, I do think a lot of drama channels definitely utilize that strategy of realizing like, oh, well, if I talk crap about this celebrity, then their fans will get upset because the internet runs on upset people. It doesn't run on happiness. It doesn't run on cat memes. Cats are gross. I don't like cats, but people seem to like cats. It doesn't run on happy babies. The internet runs on negativity. All right. Upon information and belief while plaintiff was pregnant, plaintiff again is Cardi B. On or around April 13th, 2018, Kebby published a video where Kebby stated that as a result of plaintiff's actions, plaintiff's then unborn child, which is culture, may have intellectual disabilities. To talk about someone's child is a level of rude, inappropriate lowness. Upon, and I'm not going to read all these upon information and beliefs. Because complaints are allegations, these are all allegations, except because we're witnessing a trial now, she, um, Tasha has admitted to some of these things already. So, which is very much interesting. In the past few months, which is 2019, um, Kebby has taken her Veritol one step further by making blatantly defamatory statements regarding Cardi B. Kebby has become obsessed with slandering plaintiff. In the last 14 months, Kebby has put out at least 23 videos regarding Cardi B. At this point, now um, two-ish years, maybe a year and a half, two years later, um, it's 40 videos, which... The video should have stopped when the lawsuit was filed, but you know, this is why I could never represent anybody. Clients do not listen and that would have raised my blood pressure. All right, paragraph 41. In the September 2019 video contains the false malicious and defamatory statement that Cardi B was a, I don't know, a sex worker. So YouTube algorithm has been super aggressive lately. And if you even say the slightest thing, it starts pulling your AdSense and then it reviews for seven days and it messes with my student loan money, so foolishness um you said that cardi b was a sex worker and then star jones or jo it's not star jones <laughs> jones who was the other plaintiff star marie said yes uh poor star jones probably like how am i in it paragraph 42 of september 2019 video contained the false malicious and defamatory statements um stating that cardi b used drugs dirt I don't know which things I can say anymore. Was she a drug user? Yes. And then the specific usage was listed there, allegedly. Um, September 2019, video also contains the false malicious and defamatory statement that plaintiff had herpes. Now, to allege these things is, is wild for like, what was the reason? And then also to stand behind it when you received the cease and desist to flaunt around the cease and desist is another level of wild. Like, again, what is the reason? Obviously this was gonna come back and bite you in the ass. Now, I would like to know one more time. My little channel is not scoffing at these numbers. However, this petty attorney that drafted this complaint was, and I think it is very funny. Paragraph 38, upon information and belief, September 19, 2000 video to date has garnered over 3 million views. By way of comparison, upon information and belief, the last full-length video Tasha K published prior to September 2019 only garnered approximately 223,000 views. That's not something to scoff at, but there is a big difference between 200,000 and 3 million. 3 million will get you a couple checks a couple good checks, 200,000 will also get you a couple good checks, but trust me, AdSense will run you way more money when you're in the millions, which y'all know math is not my ministry, so we're not gonna do that math. Paragraph 39, upon information and belief, only nine of her approximately 236 videos prior to September 19th garnered over 1 million views. 
it is always going to be the fact that the internet now has litigation lawyers combing through social media being like, hmm, document this, document this. Mm. The pettiness of a lawyer is always unmatched. I always tell people the pettiness of a lawyer is always unmatched. The pettiness of me when I am perturbed, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. So paragraph 49, and we're going to go through half of it, and then we'll take a pause before I start coughing. Hold on. Actually, I lied. On a second YouTube channel operated by Tasha K, Tasha K posted a video that acknowledges she was aware prior to her publishing the September 2019 video that the defamatory statements made by Jones, and Jones was the original co-defendant, may have not been true. Upon information and belief, Tasha K further acknowledged that she published the 2019 video a day earlier than she planned to because information undermining Jones's credibility was or was about to be published and Tasha K wanted the video to have an opportunity to trend, i.e. gain viewership before people saw the information that would debunk Jones's statement. And there is where we have, is that malicious intent? So since then, these allegations from this lawyer have been proven because allegedly in court, she did say, yeah, I knew, but I said it anyway. A admitted, allegedly admitted in court that she knowingly lied when she reported that rapper Cardi B had a beer bottle in her vagina and that she had herpes um and um she allegedly also claimed that she knew she was lying but she did it anyway because she knew that she would make money off of those stories dennis also claims that tasha said in court that she knew what she did was wrong that she said wrong and shout out to grace from grace reports um that is her clip and first of all it's that the allegations are so far-fetched so crazy so sensationalized because that's what drives clicks. That's what drives clicks. Foolishness. Foolishness drives clicks. And to say it and to defame somebody who is literally minding their business. I'm going to be honest. I usually say at the beginning, uh, I always say like, oh, you know, I'm familiar with this person as in like, oh, like I think their music is good. I like them. Talk Cardi B seems like such a joyful person. It's, it's a bit sad. <clears throat> Sorry. To watch somebody say such outlandish things about somebody who has come so far in their life and hey. just trying to mind their business. <clears throat> Y'all, one of these days my heat is going to work and I won't be sick. All right, so let's continue. On or about September 19, 2018, shortly after Tasha K published the September 2019 video, plaintiff through her counsel sent a cease and desist letter demanding immediate removal. Upon information and belief two days after receiving a letter, which she posted on social media, yes, again, I don't take private clients. I have it in my Instagram bio. Do not ask me legal questions. I will not answer you. And this is why people do not. Oh, Kibi, thank you, Greg. Craig, sorry. See, my English is great today. Thank you, Craig. Um, Kibi, okay. I Thank you for letting me know how, how to properly pronounce your last name. I want to make sure that's important as well. Um, I don't take private clients because people don't listen. And as an attorney, one of the most frustrating things can be to have a client, whether or not you work in-house or an internal client or for a firm, an external client, that you tell them, hey, it's going to cause commotion in your life. Don't do this. And you turn around and what are they doing? Causing commotion in their life. Nonsense. Causing nonsense. All of this could have been avoided had upon the first cease and desist letter, she said, sorry, sis girl, I was trying to get my coins. I got my coins. I know I harmed you in the way I'm, I apologize. I'm going to take it down. It still would have been wrong, but it wouldn't have been this bad. This is unnecessary. This, the cost of this lawsuit we'll get into at the end is significant amount of money. Okay. So after she posted the picture of the cease and desist letter, Kibi um, then published a second video that falsely proclaimed the statement she made in 2019, September 2019 video were true. I know, I know her um, attorney is stressed. I would be so stressed out. Okay. Paragraph 58. Tasha K has continued her campaign of defamation and harassment, even as recently, now remember this is the original complaint from 2019, even as recently as January of 2018, sorry, as recently as January 2019, Tasha K tweeted that plaintiff had herpes. 
Also, I don't know if I'm allowed to say these words, so we're about to see. Specifically tweeting at plaintiff. She tweeted at her, which I think, because you all have explained this to me, when you tweet at somebody like you're tagging them, which is craziness, um, the boldness of this is completely wild. Specifically tweeting at Cardi B, Tasha K wrote that plaintiff had confirmed irritated and then child, which followed with hashtag herpes B. Who does that? Who does that and bothers somebody that's not bothering you? Listen, the things that people do to be problematic for pay, I'm very much always flabbergasted by. There's a video, tangential side note, on Patreon now about the manosphere and how the manosphere is problematic for pay, particularly specific people that are manosphere or in manosphere adjacent, just like to say wild things because it pays. And it pays a lot of money. It pays a lot of money to have zero integrity. It pays so much money these days. All right, continuing. So remember, part of defamation is one, can you prove that these statements are false? And two, because this is a public figure, you have to show malice. Now, again, one of my biggest issues with what trial courts allow is trial courts will allow a defendant to completely ruin a person's character. They will allow you to bring in so much evidence that is completely inappropriate, and they will require, as part of you proving that these things are untrue, they required Cardi B to show that she does not have a venereal disease. So the judge required her to go to ordered her to go get tested, to which she has proven that she does not have a venereal disease. It's completely inappropriate. It is so disgusting that the court of law is being used in this manner. And I truly do feel for her because I couldn't imagine like what that feels like when you're bothered, when you're not minding, when you are minding your business and now you have to go defend yourself. And now you have to go to the doctor to show like, I told you, I don't, what are you talking about? What is the purpose of this? All right. And this is the very long defense exhibit. Is the internet cutting out? Hold on. Are y'all still there? Hi, Judy. How are you? Okay. I think y'all are still there. The internet looks like it's like cutting out on my end, but I see the comments are coming in. So let's see. Um, so I'm going to... So part of the exhibit list, so you have, which I just am use, <clears throat> pointing out the exhibit list for a few reasons because... <laughs> Lawyers are just petty. Why is number one on the exhibit list? Kibi, number six. So this is the sixth exhibit. Cardi, IG live. And then in parentheses, with towel on her head. Why, why did that need to be written in? There's so much anti-blackness in the legal system. They're like, oh, yes, write that in that the towel was on the girl's head. Why is that necessary? Why is that necessary? Re-suing Kibi. Um, also in here, Cardi, IG live, where she raps part of her song, Press. Picture of Cardi with cold sore on her lip, which is one of the things that um, this is the defense exhibit list. So this is Tasha's K exhibit list. Well, so at this point, it would be an alleged cold sore. And also, it's not herpes because she's already gone to the doctor and proven that it's not herpes. But again, what I thought was interesting, if you scroll, not if you scroll, if I scroll, <laughs> y'all are not on my computer. If you scroll down, where is it? Now I can't see it. Interview with Star Marie Jones doo, 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 is right here. There is a copy of the temporary restraining orders against Dennis Byron um, filed against Tasha Kay in Virginia. So Dennis Byron is one of the reporters, I believe, for TMZ that has been covering this case. This case, he filed a temporary restraining order because he was reporting on the case and allegedly Tasha Kay, according to him, was harassing him, which is very much it's very interesting. And then she filed, Tasha Kay filed a temporary restraining order against Dennis Byron is nothing but foolishness and nonsense and chaotic energy in this entire case. Hey, Windfire. So what I want to talk about and what I feel like people are just, oh, where'd it go? Because the way the incentive structure is, people are just talking about like, oh, let's talk about this case. Let's talk about the foolishness. Let's talk about people saying awful things. Also perpetuating people saying awful things is, what about the incentive structure behind social media drama? Everything is for pay. Problematic for pay pays a good, good, good amount of money. So let's talk about it. 
So these are some, there was another one. I don't know. I didn't clip it in, but these are some articles that I was reading. So how influencers pay drama channels to destroy their competition. It is a thing. Influencers are going around paying drama channels on YouTube to start commotion. Yes. Maybe we are paying these influencers too much money because why, what is the reason? Um, welcome to the circus nine to the circus 19 moments that defined YouTube's dramas YouTube's drama economy there is an economy on YouTube that is just drama channels and then destroyed it <clears throat> and specifically I wanted to get into this insider article which actually got into it and was very very interesting all right so it all starts with a desire to get noticed well, let's make me small okay perfect there are several characters on YouTube, and I think it's very interesting, the use of the word character, because that's what it is. I don't think most of these people behave this way. I think some of them do. I think some of them are mean-spirited, angry people. I think a lot of them are playing around, and they just love cash. There are several characters on YouTube who are a regular topic of criticism. They feature prominently on commentary, drama, and tea channels with their lives recycled time and time again as a surface way to gain viewers and clicks. But were they designed to be this way? So psychological, oh, sorry, oh, Lord, <laughs> my English is lovely today. It's lovely. Hold on. All right. Psychologist Perpetua Neo told Insider that creators may become cemented in a negative persona they built because of a constant need for attention, good or bad. People's attentions are short-lived online, she said. They need something fun, something sensational, or something provocative. What's, what's that line in the, the Kanye song? It's provocative. It gets the people going, which is like from a movie that I've never watched. Um, it can easily go too far so that creators fall so deep into the trap of playing a part online that it consumes them. Neo said this desire to be noticed, whether it's for money, fame, or views, overwhelms anything else. And this desire to be noticed as um, the psychologist is calling it, I think you see in the drama channels a lot, it's not just for the money, it's for the attention. Because some of them are making a good coin. They're making a coin, but it's not enough. And then you can tell because then they try to do extra things. For example, <clears throat> I would never give this person any attention because they're vile, they're trifling. Jeffree Star is a good example. Jeffree Star makes a coin. A good coin being a problematic racist all day. Yes, I said what I said. When you do racist things, you are racist. It is what it is. And even when the views are getting lower, they are still making such a good coin because of licensing. But they continue to go after it because of the attention. They need the attention. They need to people to see them, eyes to be on them, to say these things. There is a whole section of YouTube dedicated to these things, and you see that the incentive structure is always, okay, I get canceled, let me make this tearful, fake-ass apology, which gets millions of views, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back in like a couple months because I want to. Not because they need money. James Charles, another great example. James Charles, in his allegations, which I covered, got I, canceled is not in the world, got tapped on the back for a month, two months, came back, did his channel, like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. YouTube didn't ban them, banned him for like, I think about a month, maybe six weeks maximum. Could have retired. James Charles is a millionaire. It's because they want the fame, they want the views. And everybody, I would say, is a different combination of the problem, of what they want out of it. But YouTube is also perpetrating this. Oh, this one too. And I learned about these things when I went and did um, the without a crystal ball lawsuit with God, what's the, what's the lady's name? Forgot the, I forgot the other lady's name right now um, about that, which is some of them need the money. Some of them are living paycheck to paycheck. You can tell because the lives look frantic. The lives look like begging for cash. And some of them just want the likes. They like the likes. All right. So let's continue on. And I think there can be redemption for certain people, which is why I bring up Nicole. So if you don't know who this is, then you're too young and good for you. Enjoy your good knees while it lasts. I'm happy for you. Tati Westbrook, that was the one, yes. So Nicole, for those of you that are my age and older, Nicole used to run um, a blog called Nicole Bitchy. And this was before 
I, I, this was before the rise of drama channels on YouTube. YouTube was around when she was doing this, but I would say her target audience was like mostly black people. I would say mostly black women um, was the blogs. We were on the blogs, we were reading the blogs. Everything was on a blog. I was the other, World Star used to be a blog. Um, nobody goes on that anymore because it's, it's problematic and all that. But Nicole Bitchy had this blog where she made a lot of money and she was that girl and she reported on celebrity gossip and drama. And herself has admitted multiple times that she instigated and outed a lot of people and their drama and their personal business in a quest for building her brand. She has since given all of that up. And I think it's um, very interesting to read what she wrote in her goodbye letter. She, I th would say, she had the blog for around seven, eight years and she like steady income doing well. And she kept trying to transition into something more positive. So every time she would do something positive, she noticed like, oh, people aren't responding to this. They want the drama. They want the, the nonsense. They want the foolishness. And she was tired of it. So she retired it. And this is from her letter that she wrote um, saying like, hey, I'm, I'm done with this. Like we're moving on. And I think it's very interesting. So this is from her letter. There's a constant internal struggle between being a character, Nicole Bitchy, when I walk out in public and being the woman I know I was meant to be. Eventually, I began feeling like I wasn't doing enough and I would never reach my goals. I felt stuck. I felt boxed in. No matter how much success people thought I had or how many page views or our stories generated, I felt like I was regressing because she was tired of it. Eventually, a decent person would get tired of constantly perpetrating nonsense and foolery. And so I think she is a very good story of, hey, you can change it. You can, you know, apologize. I know she apologized to a lot of people, child. There was a lot of things on that website. I used to read like as a teenager, like, what is this? Like, oh, wow. Was I a teenager still? Maybe I was like in my 20s. And the biggest villain in this story, to be honest, who gets away with all of this is YouTube. It's YouTube. So YouTube finally reveals exactly how much it makes from ads. 34.4 billion year dollars, not years, <laughs> dollars in the last three years. Capitalism is ruining everything. YouTube is making so much coin off of the drama, which is why YouTube has a whole economy, a whole ecosystem of drama channels, of nonsense, of foolery. Which is why YouTube will never fully ban those channels because they make so much money. They make so much money for this. And they're actually, it's very interesting. Someone sent it to me the other day about how when you hit a certain amount of subscribers, I think it's like maybe 75, 80K subscribers, YouTube has an internal agency. So they send an agent to you to be like, hey, you're doing really great. You know, this drama. The tea is hot. I'm sure it's some cringy corporate person. The tea is hot, sis, or whatever cringy thing they're saying. Um, you need to keep doing this. And if you pivot from those things, then your YouTube internal agent, hello, what you doing? Mm -mm, that's not what we agreed. You need, to, you need to switch back to what you were doing. It's very strange behavior, but the behavior will continue on and continue on and continue on. So with that being said, while I definitely think Tasha K in this um, is the villain in Cardi B's story. Overall, so are we, all the people that have watched this. And so is YouTube. YouTube is the big villain. YouTube is incentivizing people to continue to do these behaviors. And it's not just YouTube. It's Instagram. It's the TikTok, I'm sure. Um, but YouTube, I would say, is bigger than those. YouTube it has the infrastructure and the setup to actually make changes that it doesn't want to do because it pays. Being problematic for pay pays. So there's my spiel on that. Wow, we got through this live quick. Um, <clears throat> let's go through the comments. I'm a bit afraid, but hey, it is what it is. Let's go through and then drink some wine for me. Dry January is going. I'm surprised with myself. I'm proud of me. All right. You know, I can only have this GIF GIF. I don't know if it's GIF or GIF. My tech friends are always telling me it's GIF, but that sounds so weird. GIF sounds better. So let's go through these comments. Okie dokie. Let's see. 
Okay, prosper with Jess. I was waiting on this. I know y'all have y'all have been bothering me about this. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan, how are you? All right, let's get into this. All right. If you just tuned in, we went through all of it. So if you want to watch from the beginning, because it's just going to be a lot of my forehead leaned in <laughs> the comments. All right. Okay. Do, do, do. Blue quartz. TK's lawyers are laughably black, laughably bad. English is great today. Um, she couldn't find nobody else. These lawyers are awful. To be honest, her legal team, I don't know where she found them. It's it is not good when a judge is chastising you and laughing at you. It is not good. It is not good when a judge is like, mm, you're a Proving plaintiff's case. Like, mm, it's not good. I will go out on a limb and say most likely, I think, in my opinion, she's going to lose this case. Which this, I forget what the amount that she's actually suing for, um, for damages is. But I would assume probably like two mil around there. It's going to be interesting. In defamation and libel per se and false light, the hard thing is proving the malice when you are a public figure. But also you have to prove damages. So you have to prove that there was harm, which you can prove harm by showing like, hey, I've been going to the therapist since you posted these 50, 11 videos about me. I've been doing these things. Um, my husband had to call the hotline because I was unwell, et cetera. Y'all know I can't say that word. Um, those types of things. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, type effectiveness to their point. Yes, Twitter AI aggressively enables dogpiling. Yeah. All of, and I should have listed Twitter too. All of the social media companies enable this behavior. And yes, individual people are problematic as well. However, individual people would have never gotten here without these companies being like, oh, let's encourage all this nonsense because they make money. They make money off of it. Okay. Let's see. Um, to Misty's point, she's a clout placer. Cardi is trending, so she milty to make money. I, I think if you had honest conversations with a lot of drama channels, they would tell you, yeah. I mean, she already said, yeah, I did this because I made, I need some money. It works multiple ways. It's very interesting, and I've seen um, other channels talk about this as well, like commentary channels. It's interesting as a you as a part-time YouTuber, um, to look at your most popular videos and see what's popular. And it's usually the most dramatic foolishness or it's not dramatic, but the title and the thumbnail is something that seems salacious. It's usually that. So like my most viewed video um, in comparison to Tosh K's Paltry, 70K, uh, and it's for the Kanye contract breakdown. It's a contract breakdown. Yeah, you know, I think I'm funny sometimes. It's not like that riveting, but I think when people saw the thumbnail, they thought it would be like some salacious thing and it attracted people who want to see legal videos. So, which is, which is good. I'm glad that's the target audience. But if you look at other videos of what did well for a long time, the second best video was the video I did about the potential Joe Budden and his podcast lawsuit because his viewership is hectic and they want to see hectic stuff. That was like a wild three weeks when that was like doing well in the algorithm. I got so many strange comments. And I was like, what is this? I was like, we're talking about a lawsuit. Like, this is a legal breakdown. Like, there's not about to be any type of like, oh, so-and-so is on drug. Like, it's not going to happen. I'm a lawyer. Like, what, what do you think is going to happen over here? It was so interesting. It was so interesting to see. Okay. Let's see, we're continuing to go through the comments. All right. I'm so glad you're talking about this night because I just was just watching Natalie and Emily D. Baker, lawyer YouTubers, talk about this case last night. Oh, awesome. Lawyer YouTube, I feel like, I feel like the majority of lawyer YouTube, we are very much okay, we're going to go through this lawsuit. Maybe it'll be a little funny. Maybe you get a little sass every once in a while, but it's only going to get as spicy as the lawsuit is getting. 
Okay. Um, thank you. The Beyonce GIF. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's how I was like, oh, okay. This is interesting. Again, if you just tuned in, just fast forward to the beginning because now we're just doing forehead and comments. <laughs> Yes, I saw that video. There's legit a video where Tasha says that her lawyer told her not to do something, but she was going to say it anyway because she paid him. And now that video is being used in court. When your lawyer tells you to do something, remember, you gave them your hard earned pennies. You did whatever to earn those pennies. You should just listen to the lawyer. When people don't listen to me when I'm giving them like legal counsel, which I'm so glad to be a recovering lawyer these days, it very much is like, so I went to law school, spent all this money for people to ask me to do something and then not listen to me. Huh, interesting. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Jones. <laughs> I accidentally said star Jones. I hope she's doing well. Um to Jace's point, not them pulling numbers on this woman. Listen, sometimes you got to slap people with their own numbers. Like you said this, but I see that you are purposely using this to get some money. Okay. <clears throat> to Ashanti's point, I think there are a lot of channels that change because people change like their channels for different reasons. Like, for example, I'm a recovering lawyer now. Lawyer Reacts will continue on because it's interesting to me. I follow it, but also because like y'all love it. So we'll continue to do it. But I'm also going to do other things, too. So like maybe, you know, some of those videos are like, ah, oh, Stephanie, I'm not really interested. Like Colonizer Exposed, for example will stay on Patreon because people on Patreon specifically know like, oh, this is what's coming on there. I like it. But when I put it on YouTube, most people are like, oh, OK, well, mm. I don't want to like watch history stuff from Stephanie. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. So I think a lot of channels do change or channels will do what I did in the beginning, which was you try something new and you realize it works, which was originally this channel was just for me to document like, okay, girl, you got to pay off these student loans. Just do it for yourself. So you keep on track and like, let's also test out something fun, whatever. And then when I did the Kanye video and it worked, it made me realize like, oh, I could do lawyer reaction videos. I don't really see a lot of people doing that. That'll be fun. I'm reading these lawsuits anyway because I'm nosy. Sure. So I would guess to say that a lot of drama channels started off maybe somewhat well-meaning, maybe not actually harming anybody and realized the more salacious they got, the more money came in the door. And the more money came in the door, the more salacious they became until they just got to the point of saying like, well, I'm just going to say wild things because who is this celebrity anyway? I don't know them, but that's dehumanizing an actual person. There are consequences to the things we say online, which is why I try even when like I don't like the defendant or the plaintiff to not say anything um, harmful. We've done how many videos about Dave Ramsey and I've called him crotchety, but I haven't called him out his name. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you. Okay. Oh, I'm guessing your channel came up as a recommendation because of Cameron Monet. I watch Cameron, hopefully. She seems sweet. She is a fellow attorney in Alabama, I think. All right. Oh, hold on. I lost, I lost, I lost my spot. Let me go back up. Um, Maxili, apparently her lawyers are criminal attorneys. IDK, why Tasha would not hire someone more qualified. Honestly, I didn't look her legal team up. We, we can maybe do that live. I'd be curious because civil litigation doesn't seem um, where it's at for them, in my opinion. Whenever people tell me, oh, I have a lawyer. You're my lawyer friend. I'm going to call you if I, um, if I get arrested. I'm like, don't call me. You will stay arrested. <laughs> I know nothing about criminal law. I can't help you. Don't call me. You can call. If you call me, I'm going to then go refer you to a criminal lawyer. You will stay in jail. What do I know about criminal law? Tech transactions, yes. But I've also left that behind because it's not my ministry no more. But it's very interesting. People assume that lawyers um, are competent. I would say some of us have sense. It's varying levels. But people assume that lawyers can just do anything. And I'm like, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. And also, if you are going to be on the hook for potentially millions of dollars, you should hire the best person possible with that money that has won defamation cases. That's what I would have done. 
So yeah, child. <laughs> Cali Coco, I'm done. Anyways. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, so let's see. Um, Sarah, stay paid. Yes, Sarah, get your check. I heard the settlement was around $3 million. Um, I'm curious to see. I, I can't remember. It, I feel like it probably is like 2 or $3 million, Um, the amount that they're suing for. Okay. Um, Callie Coco's point. YouTube used to make a bunch of videos about Takashi 6 9 as well because of the amount of views it got. It was guaranteed to make money. People do, pe we're all participating it, in it to various levels. So, for example, even the most well researched, very theoretical commentary channels will tie whatever they're talking about to somewhat a trending topic, usually a little bit, because that will get eyes on it. It might not have much to do with it, but they will we'll use like a thumbnail or something. It's very hard unless you are a dedicated history channel to just say like, all right, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do because people want something current usually. It can happen. Like, for example, one of my favorite channels is Intellectual. I, I'll write them. I and oh, let me just look her thing up and I'll put it in here. Great channel. She runs a very good, I would, yeah, I would say Black History channel. She does other history sometimes, I think, or maybe it might just be Black history, um, which I think is very much needed because Black history is not taught in America. And when it's taught, it's not taught properly. And Florida is over here passing laws that you can't teach it now if it makes white people cry. It's always nonsense. So I highly recommend her channel. Um, her channel is one of the few that, yes, intellectual media. Here we go. I was going to spell it and I was like, I'm not going to spell this right. So let me uh, drop it there. But her channel is one of the few where she does decades. She does decades series. So now she's about to do the 80s. Highly recommend you watch her channel. It's so informative. It's great. She she's lovely. I, I highly I couldn't recommend her channel anymore. Um, she is like any more than I am. That's what I mean. Um, she is one of the few, though, that I see that it doesn't matter what farce and nonsense is going on. She's like, mm, I'm not in it. <laughs> I'm not in it. Y'all need to learn history. I'm a public historian. She's, she's a public historian. And that's what she's giving. And I think that's great. High integrity. Very, very high integrity. She's also hilarious, to Jace's point. She Great content. Just go over there. It's great. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <clears throat> To Callie Coco's point, Stephen A. Smith just had Rona for three weeks and ESPN labeled every video with his name so people would click it even though he wasn't there. Okay, okay. Even Disney finesses the system to make money. Everybody is running a small scale scam. For example, the Wendy Williams show, Wendy ain't been on it in how many months? How many months? How many months? Y'all still the Wendy Williams show and Miss Wendy is not there. It's very interesting. They'll just use the name, use whatever's trending. Hugh McDonald. Oh, you subbed intellectual. Great. Yes. Go sub to her. She's, she's a lovely person. And you learn so much, to be honest. Also, I recommend her Patreon. It's very good. All right. Well, on that note, we'll end on a happy note. That's a good happy note. I appreciate y'all. I will see. We're back on our schedule. <laughs> I've been adjusting to my new um, career, my new, my new job. So I'll probably talk about that in my student loan update video. So and we're going to do, I know a few of you sent me that Naviant and their settlement. So we're going to do a Naviant video. Um, what else is coming up? We're going to do that rich people video I was talking to you about. I, the words aren't in my mind right now. Um, about inheriting money and being a waste man. So we're going to do that. And pa Patreon, I didn't forget about you. I'm going to try film this weekend like four videos. That's the goal. I've had, I've started outlining them. But yeah. So highly recommend if you hate your job or you want a new career, you know, you tune in to student loan videos. So we're going to talk about that. But yeah. And if you have any requests of things you want to see, let me know. We're also, I need to get it off the ground, but we're still going to eventually get to the, um, oh, well, that's not me. <laughs> I mean, it's me, but here we are. We're going to eventually do throwbacks because I want to try start batch filming, which I'm not good at. I think that would lower my stress level, which would be great. So I'm going to, I'm going to really do that. All right. So, ah, oh, thank you, Robert. Super chats to free Stephanie from student loans. Hey, you know, 
I'm making some progress. I'm out of the twos and into the ones. And by twos, for those of you that aren't familiar, the 200,000s. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm in the 100s now. So, hey, you know, some progress is being had, but all right. So I will see y'all this week. I'll probably see y'all this weekend in a video. And I will see y'all for our live next Thursday around 7 p.m. EST. So have a lovely evening. Be safe. I'll catch all of you later. Bye. Oh, let's drink the water. <laughs>